somebody with an autoimmune disease, me, it just happened to be my, my colon, somebody else, lupus, or somebody else, is this just inherited weaknesses that your body's attacking that weak area? Like why, for my autoimmune disease, was it my colon and somebody else's might be a different area of their body? Like when autoimmune attacks, why different areas for different people? That's an excellent question, and I wish I for sure had the answer to that, but I think you're right. There's a genetic tendency to develop autoimmune disease. So people, autoimmune diseases do run in families, but the genes don't determine your future because genes are modified by your diet and how you live in your life. So we say the genes like set the stage or give you the blueprint but then that blueprint is modified by what you eat. You can excite the autoimmune disease or you could silence those genes to not cause a problem with excellent nutrition. So gene silencing and gene modification through good nutrition is much more powerful than what you inherit. The inherit gives you a tendency towards the disease, but is not a primary cause of the disease itself. But yes, some people would be more prone to a type of autoimmune disease than another type. But most cases of autoimmune disease in the United States today, there's no family history of having those autoimmune diseases because the explosion of autoimmune diseases has paralleled the rise in cancer from 1950 to the year to 2000. We've had an explosion of cancer of all autoimmune diseases and cancers going up as we've had more exposure to toxic food, fast food, and processed food in the country. You know. By the way, a primary cause of, of inflammatory bowel disease is fried foods and exposure to heated oils. It's a primary contributory cause of bowel disease. And yeah. we have people, people are living on foods that are fried or heated with yeah. oil that are heated, you know? Yeah. If my children eat a healthy diet, are they at a higher risk to get inflammatory bowel disease because I suffered from it or is it more diet no. related? No, it's not. If they live and are raised on a healthy diet and don't expose themselves to fast food and, and petrochemicals and plastics, but particularly fried foods, you know, if they, but then again, if you live in southern parts of the United States and you expose yourself to lots of fried foods, even people without those genetics develop all kinds of crazy sure. problems. So would it's you the, say would you say inflammatory bowel disease is a hundred percent diet related, or not, or not necessarily? Um, I could. It depends on the context of that sentence. I can say that if I could raise a society with great nutrition, um, you would not see inflammatory bowel disease. even we could say it's 100% diet and environmental related. But since I can't raise the society since birth with good health, then I have to say it's partially genetic and partially dietary related because our diets are not good enough to completely suppress the genetic alterations and genetic defects that can, contrib that can contribute to it. But keep in mind that our genome or our genetic is not just from what we eat, but it was also from the way our mother and father ate in our um, ate and you know from prior generations, particularly a mother. In other words, the diet your mother eats, not just during pregnancy, but even the foods that she's exposed to or before she gets pregnant, because the eggs that you form you lived in your mother's body for her whole life until she was got pregnant. Your eggs were formed in the womb when she was in her mother's body. So your eggs, when she, when a woman gets pregnant at age 33, the, the eggs have been there for 30, almost 34 years. You know what I mean? And they, and those eggs are damaged by her diet. So here's an example of that: is that the leading cause of death in children is acute blastocytic leukemia, other than accidents, you know, and that's linked to the mother's diet even years prior to conception. And it's particularly linked to luncheon meats, like the consumption of pastrami, bologna, bacon, and hot dogs. And that also, the bacon, pastrami, hot dogs, and fast food hamburgers are also linked to brain tumors in children. So when you have a 12-year-old daughter that gets a brain tumor and dies, that was contributed to by the, by the unhealthy foods the mother ate, not just during pregnancy, but even before pregnancy. How much before pregnancy, like when they were little kids or their whole life or just? They usually talk about um, two to three years prior to conception okay. is still a, a frat. And we're advising women today to not to have um, seafood, particularly bivalves and, and crustaceans and crabs and lobster, even five years up to being pregnant. Because we're finding that the, the nanoplastic particles and the toxic metals and the other, piece, the other petrochemicals that you get from being exposed to seafood 
um, stay, take five years to leave the body, you know? So it takes five years to clean the body out. So we're, you know, so we know that some of these toxic chemicals, like seafood is a Geiger counter. Uh, the Geiger counter means that if you eat it during your pregnancy, if you drink alcohol, take drugs, or eat seafood during the pregnancy, you expose you to enough toxins that it could damage your child, right? But when you're not pregnant and you're 35, 40 years old and not having any more children, it doesn't mean it's not damaging you. It's just there's no Geiger counter to collect the, to, to reflect the damage so quickly. So it takes now decades for you to see the damage and you don't relate it to your eating of clams and oysters and lobster and processed meats and fast foods. And you don't see that the damage because then you get a cancer 30 years later. and You didn't know you caused it when you were. And then the other major cause of eating um, these toxic um, bottom feeders, because I'm mentioning fish are, and small fish like sardines and minnows and things are now um, full of nanoparticles and uh, plastic particles. And when you eat the digestive tract of small fish, you get exposed to plastic and plastic infiltrates the brain. But, but, in, but we know that the, um, the filtering of so much water through clams and oysters and scallops and lot, you know, the bottom feeders get a lot of settling of, of, um, of algae and the, you know, the algae produce, uh, the, especially the um, spironobac, um, different types of bacteria, cyanobacteria, that produce a compound called BMAA. And this is a compound that's been found in lake fish with runoff, agricultural runoff, producing more algae growth in the waters. But also, it's, in, it's all on the continental shelf now from so much dumping of garbage in the ocean. So we have these, the BMAA shows clustering of, of, um, Alzheim, of ALS, Right, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, which is quite a severe disease, and then you know life-threatening, terrible, horrible problem, and then of course PDS, Parkinson's dementia syndrome now, which develops later in life from people eating a lot of seafood earlier in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they don't. They, there's no way they can. They don't relate the later life dementia or Parkinson's with early life exposure to these foods. But now we're showing the studies do link them. You know, are showing the the long-term links, but particularly. You know, young people have no idea of, what, of the long-term damage that cumulatively affects your body when you eat these foods throughout your whole life, and then you manifest with some disease, or your child develops with some problem, and they think it's genetic. Well, yeah, it's kind of genetic, but so when you ask me that question, can I, would it be totally genetic? Well, if I can control the diet of the parents for their lives and the children for their lives, yeah, it would be totally genetic. We, we got to control not only that person, but their but their parents died as well. You know what I mean? What do you mean for their lives? Not just five years before the kids are born or their whole lives? Well, if, you know, if we're going to, we could say, you know, people could disagree and they could say, I could say it could wipe out 85% of cancers if people ate healthy. Yeah, but I could wipe out, you know, it sounds like name that tune. I could name that tune in three notes, you know, but yeah, I can name that tune. I could wipe out 98% of cancers if I could, if I could fix the diets of the, the generation before. Sure. You know, not what I'm saying? So, sure. yeah, the eggs, of, the eggs of the children are affected by the diets of the parents, of course. All right.